Wait, I spent how much on these benchmarks? Picture it. It's May 2020. The 30 series or Ampere generation of NVIDIA cards has just been released. The pandemic, it's going to be over soon. No impact at all. Or so we thought. We hadn't even considered yet how many scalpers would find themselves on a yacht because of the crypto mining craze and all the people trapped at home during the pandemic. King of the silicon stack was the GA102, the chip that would find its way into the 3090. When the silicon comes out of the lab, if it achieves these levels, it becomes a 3090. If it doesn't quite make it, it becomes a 3080 Ti. But the special ones, they have a chance to become a 3090 Ti. NVIDIA held onto these ones for a little while. See, these ones had about 2.41% more of everything. The ones destined to become the 3090 Ti were basically perfect silicon. But is it worth it? Do you get enough benefit out of those 2.41% more of everything to justify the price tag? Now the ultimate question comes down to one of two cards. The Galax Hall of Fame Edition 3090 Ti and the EVGA 3090 Ti Kingpin. Once the AIBs get a hold of the GPUs, they go through their own bidding process. The ones that don't perform particularly well end up becoming the 3090 Ti For the Win 3 Black, then there's the For the Win 3 Gaming, the For the Win 3 Ultra, and now the most special of the special GA102s. They become the Kingpin. Now the funny thing is, the Kingpin was actually a pretty good deal. It was only $300 more than the For The Win 3 Ultra, and it came with a 1600 watt platinum rated power supply. It's not like there was going to suddenly be a huge price cut in the Ultra Hybrid. Hello darkness my old friend. But in order to find out if it's worth it, you're going to need a 3090 Ti Kingpin Edition. Fortunately, we have one.
so let's say you have a 3090 Kingpin. Do you need to go out and buy the latest and greatest chip for $2,500? But hey, it's okay. It comes with a free 1600 watt PSU for some reason. But is it necessary? Let's have a look at the scores. We're seeing 3.3% different. That's it. We're talking about three frames per second. You're not going to see that when you're out there in the real world gaming. If you're playing, let's say, Warzone, you're averaging 150 to 200 frames, maybe a little bit more depending on your settings. You're looking at six frames, maybe four and a half, six frames. Like that, That's not worth it. So let's have a look at the graphics scores. The 3090 Ti Kingpin, we were able to achieve 2,205 megahertz and an average of 2,190 megahertz over the course of the run. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. The, uh, the 3090 Kingpin, however, was able to achieve 2,115 megahertz and averaged 2,103 megahertz over the course of the run. So we're seeing an 87 megahertz difference between the two. When we get down into the average memory clock frequencies, I actually had a really good go uh, on this one for the 3090. So this is part of the reason why it scored so high. Normally this is actually right down in that 1400 range, 1390 range for megahertz on the RAM speed. But here we were able to get, I was probably running about 50 megahertz faster. Mega transfers, don't, don't hit me in the comments on, on using the wrong language. Uh, average clock frequency, was strong uh, on both of them. Basically, the, the speed was the speed for the life of the run. Temperature-wise, the 3090 ran way cooler, uh, and that has to do with the amount of voltage being put through the card. Okay, now in looking at Time Spy, uh, we're going to ignore the CPU score. It's not relevant for what we're looking at here today. We're seeing, you know, over 6%, 6.2, 6.8, 7.2% 2 more FPS. But again, we're talking 10 frames per second. You're spending $2,500 to get a free PSU for 10 frames in Time Spy. If you get 10 frames while playing uh, Call of Duty or whatever your title is, you're not going to notice at these levels. If you were at 60 and it brought you up to 70, that's a whole different thing. You know, if you're 4K gaming and you get, get 10 frames per second, that's something. But when you're well over 100 frames per second, you're not going to notice. Now getting into the, the actual numbers again. Uh, it, we've got the 3090 on the left this time, the 3090 Ti on the right this time. And we were able to actually push the 3090 Ti way harder in this than we were in Port Royal. 2250 megahertz uh, with an average of 2226. That's higher than what we peaked in Port Royal. So we were able to push this harder. Uh, the RAM speed, same general area, I think it was 1397 in Port Royal, we're seeing 1388 here, again averages it throughout. Uh, the 3090, oddly enough again, seems to be able to hold the better memory frequency. Now the weird part is you've got on the 3090 the RAM on both sides, so it technically could run hotter. So it's weird that being able to run the RAM colder doesn't seem to be netting any benefit. Now, if you go watch one of uh, Lumi's videos on this card, he actually highlights the fact that the RAM running too cold makes it perform worse, which makes it harder to do extreme overclocking with the 3090 Ti, which is really counterintuitive. I imagine it's still going to be good for the lifespan of the RAM, but not necessarily the performance. And temperature-wise, almost identical here. 53 degrees on the 3090, 55 degrees on the 3090 Ti. The only reason to buy a card like this is because you can and you like the best of whatever it is, uh, or because you're going to use it the way it's intended. See, these cards, these cards are not meant for somebody like me, or most likely like you, that's just going to sit at home, use the AIO, plug it in, know that you got the best of the best. This card is designed for that extreme overclocker, that, that, that guy or gal who's going to strap on an LN2 canister and take it to the moon, because you don't need to shunt mod it, you don't need to do anything except get it cold and push it hard. That's what this card is for. So if you're putting the money out, you better be an extreme overclocker or have money to burn. So that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. Uh, the benchmark results are finally out. I did not in this video put on a 1,000 watt BIOS. If that's something that you would like to see, 
leave it in the comments, hit like, hit subscribe, let me know that that's the next step. We've looked at what this card can do in a natural environment for a usual user, but can we push it harder?